I send people out on their own with these uh, very visible looking systems and quite often we'd send more than one person out at a time and they would come back to us and sort of describe this moment of seeing the other person that was taking part in this piece. They'd be like, oh, I saw this other person and we looked at each other and we had this moment of connection. And, I, and they sort of shared a moment between strangers. And for us, this was a, like a, a real sort of epiphany moment of, okay, we, we have an environment and a culture where we're constantly trying to connect to faraway places. We're constantly using our music to shut us off from what's around us. We're using Facebook and Twitter to talk to people who aren't next to us. We're constantly using devices that facilitate mobility to actually separate us from the places we're being mobile in. So, so we kind of started thinking about, well, how can we use these, these tools we're already using to force people to have those connections with strangers, to have that moment of eye contact with someone in the street, to have this shared moment. So we worked on a, a number of different kind of theatre pieces that involved these technologies. And in one of these theatre works, we had audience members roaming around the city, listening to geo, uh, satellite triggered audio, but we wanted to make the world feel a little bit strange. So we enlisted a group of um, uh, volunteer performers who we were going to send instructions as an MP3, just as an audio file, and they were going to be scattered all across the city following the instructions on this MP3. And this would provide the backdrop for the theatre show. But we didn't want these performers to just be kind of performance slaves, so we thought we'd give them a story and we'd give them a soundtrack as well. And they enjoyed it so much, we just thought, okay, we'll just scrap the theatre bit and we'll just have this kind of, this set of instructions that an audience can perform for themselves. And so we started with this thing called a subtle mob. And the reason we called it a subtle mob was because we didn't want it to be a flash mob. The idea was not to make a spectacle, because much as I love flash mobs, and there's been some beautiful and moving flash mobs, there's been some awful commercial disasters, but there's been a lot of amazing ones. The problem for me was always that more people see them on YouTube than are actually there in that moment and experience it. So we wanted to make something really boring. Um, well, boring visually. We didn't want you to notice anything happening if you weren't taking part. So we, we make say this really brashly, we make beautiful soundtracks, um, we try anyway, we, we focus a lot on writing the score and the music beforehand and then we create these instructions as well and the idea is that we send out this mp3 to people who've signed up to take part and they are told when to start listening to the mp3 and they're told an area of a city to listen to it in, so it's, there's no meeting point, when you start um, one of these you don't know who else is taking part. And the instructions that you're hearing are very, very simple. They're all reconstructions of everyday events we've seen. So we, we act as documentary makers. We go out, we observe the world, we notate it. I should show you some pictures now, shouldn't I, seeing as I actually prepared some. Um, let me see what I've got in here. So uh, I'm hoping none of you are going to be in these accidentally. Um, so we... Um, for example, we, um, uh, this is two performers um, restaging something we've just seen. So we go out, we see a couple of people, like someone's resting, someone's putting their hand on their shoulder, and this for us is a, is a symbol of the beauty in everyday life. And it's one of those moments that you just kind of, you just see, you don't anything about it, but it kind of says something about the world, and it says people care about each other. So we then, we sit in cafes, and we turn, it's very important to work in cafes. When you're making site-specific work, always have nice places to sit and eat and write the scripts. We turn this into instructions, um, and they become part of the soundtrack. So this is um, audience members in somewhere, I don't know, uh, reenacting this moment. So they're kind of recreating something we've seen. But what's actually happening is we've sent out um, We've actually sent out, I've got a diagram, I, I really prepared this. Um, we've sent out two different MP3s, so half the audience has got one MP3, half the audience has got another one. And the when you're getting a, uh, you're not just getting instructions, you're also getting these kind of narrative descriptions of the world. So at one moment, the people on one MP3, they're hearing a moment described, they're hearing a story about someone putting a hand on someone's shoulder, and then everywhere they look in the world, they start seeing this happening. So they start actually seeing it playing out in the real world. And this swaps backwards and forwards over and over again until eventually you're kind of, you don't know whether you're a performer or a watcher, 
But what's really important is that you're never really visible to um, anyone else who's not taking part. All they see is they see people being nice to each other. Or they see tiny moments sort of replicated. We've, we've done this with, we did one in Kent, in Kent that was not that subtle. Unfortunately, the streets were quite empty and a lot of people came and it was pretty bloody obvious when um, sort of 800 people all stopped and put their hand on each other's shoulders. But we, but we have done it with kind of over a thousand people spread out over six or seven city blocks in Japan and you really wouldn't notice it was happening. Um, we, we moved on to a slightly different structure recently. Yeah, with, yeah. How, how would you know if you have to interact with somebody else? How would you know the other one? Perfect question. Because that brings me to this diagram. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pay him. Um, in the first piece we made, everyone's doing it in pairs, so you're actually with a partner. Um, so you're coming with someone and your interactions, you know who they are. But we thought, that's boring, let's do it with strangers. So we started um, thinking, okay, how can we get people to, to start interacting with strangers, like you say? So we have four MP3s now, one, two, three, four, and um, it doesn't always work, but it works enough that um, we're happy with it. The instruction you might get is, um, oh, I should say something about how these, are, how these are spoken. With the first piece, it was always about you. It was kind of, we're asking you to take a role in this film, because that's what we call these. We say they're films, they're cinema being made without cameras. You have the soundtrack, you have the narration, you have the performance. We're just lazy filmmakers. We don't bring a camera. There. It just it happens around you, um, and there is a reason for that. I can come to. But we um, we wanted to make a darker film. We wanted to make something that was about a terrorist bombing in a train station, and so we we couldn't have you being yourself. We couldn't have you performing yourself. That would be a little weird. And if, oh, I don't know. I'm not making any judgments. Here. Um, so we wanted to get people into characters, so we, we changed the instructions so it's all described as if it's CCTV footage. So what you're hearing, it says, like a police reconstruction fiction says, okay, we're going to, we need to find out what happened, so we're going to reconstruct an event. We're going to tell you all the video footage we have of this person, let's say it's Claire, you're going to be Claire and we want you to do everything that we saw in the video. So the voiceover describes everything that's happening in the video, it says, Claire walks to the exit of the station. And you go, okay, I'm going to walk to the station. Claire hands a note to a man standing with his arms folded. She looks around, she sees someone with their arms folded because one of the other MP3s has had an instruction that says, stand in this part of the station with your arms folded. And then he doesn't know that someone will come up to him and give him a note. So you start having these interactions happening with each other. And this was. We did this in a train station in the UK first, and for those of you who don't know, in England, taking photographs in train stations is a big no-no uh, under various kind of anti-terrorism laws, which was kind of useful for us in relation to the piece. Someone who came and took part, their MP3 player broke um, when they were doing it, and they thought, oh, well, I'll just take some pictures. So they're standing in the station taking pictures. The police come up to them, stop them, search them, take their ID, and ask what they're doing. Now, oh, I'm taking pictures of this show. And the police are kind of... What show? <laughs> no, you can't have events. So says, no, no, can we see the pictures, please? And he shows them, and they're just pictures of people in a train station. Um, and uh, they make him delete the pictures and um, escort him out of the station. Well, probably about 400 people around them were reenacting this moment and carrying out this, this scene. Um, one thing that's quite important for us is that we don't... There's no venue. There's no hosts, there's no ushers, there's no equipment. Everything is handled by the audience. We send out the MP3, and, and for us it's this real um, pushing a boulder off a cliff moment. We hit send once we finish the farm and it's ready, and at that point we can't stop it, we can't change it, we can't suddenly contact 500 people and say, oh, we're, we're cancelling it, don't do it. It's in their hands and they, they make the show. So, so essentially, um, for us, it's really nice. If they don't turn up, there's no show. There's no empty venue waiting for them to turn up. It's really democratic. And if their MP3 player breaks, it's their fault. Which, after years of making interactive digital work and it breaking, and the audience coming to you and saying, oh, this doesn't work, that's brilliant. Now it's not our fault. Um, so so that's, been, that's been quite useful for us. Can I quickly yeah, ask something? Yeah, please, story. I'm, yeah, I'm shooting really talking, fast here. Yeah, because you're talking about 400 uh, yeah. uh, uh, participants. 
but we have four soundtracks. Yeah. That means like 100 people have the same soundtrack. Roughly, yeah. That is almost becoming a performance, right? Yeah, yeah. Like they... people simultaneously fold their arms yeah. in a certain way. Yes. Another 400 people doing another yeah. movement. So it's almost a, it's um, switching between performance Very and story. Very much so. Yeah. We definitely, like we definitely talk about it as as the audience are performing in a in a film themselves. They kind yeah, of yeah. they are becoming performers, and it's kind of. The nice thing though is because we tell people to do the players themselves, we don't have any control on synchronization. And initially we thought this was a problem, um, but then we realized what you get is this sort of fluttering where it's not that everyone simultaneously does that. So the one person does it, then another, and another, and another, and another. So you, it becomes a little bit lighter. But, but I meant the performance, I meant almost a dance. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. in that sense, huh? Yes. Compared to the story. Yes. Yeah. Um, although people, I guess, I guess people don't see it in a way. Sometimes okay. they do. There's a little choreography in the world, but yeah, when it yeah. goes wrong, yeah. it does just look like a big dance where they've mm -hmm. gone wrong. Um, I will. What I will do is just talk. Unless there's any other questions about that, we can just kind of do questions as we go along. A little bit practical. Like, do you have a list of people who uh, participate? No. Oh well, we have that email address. Yeah. That's yeah. What that's I mean. what I mean. So you know how they, many people receive those. Uh, yeah. They register. No, no, it's um, okay. uh, people have to subscribe and, uh, and then they get it. So we're doing one at the moment in uh, Zamen, and the process is um, uh, you know, they go to the um, oh, that's not useful, sorry, that's the Chinese version. Um, they get um, just literally a sign up form, that's it. And then we and we and I guess in some ways the experience starts when you get that first email. That's mm -hmm. something for us as well. That the first moment you get that communication with us, which says, you know, try to remain visible, then that that um, uh, that's where it starts. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what what I will I'll, what I will show you very quickly, um, just as the kind of the flip side to this, I guess, is what we've been thinking about recently is doing this with um, a spectacle and not doing it with, um, so I think we've got Sam, I can leave this playing in the background, um, let's see. So we, we decided to flip this the other way around and we thought, okay, what if we stop doing the internal sound? Because we love headphones and we love the, the way they frame the world as cinema and you get this kind of, um, you get this sense of looking at the world as a film. And that for us is really important because people think when you film something, it's worth looking at. And our thinking is, well, if we make the world look like a film, then people will think the world is worth looking at. Then they'll think each other are worth looking at. And then we'll cure poverty and famine and world peace will ensue and all this stuff. And that's our naive hippie hope. Um, so we thought, okay, can we, make, can we make the world cinematic not on headphones? Can we do it on speakers? So what we've started doing recently is these... Um, speaker symphonies where we've made sort of 40 portable speakers. Each speaker is playing uh, a different instrument from the composition. That, oh, we can hear a bit. Voila. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we can rock it up. It's so cool. Um, that's fine. So um, each, each speaker is controlled by satellite positioning, so as they move through the city, it triggers. Um, um, it triggers different sections of the composition and as a group move into one area they're all in the same key in the same section of the piece um, and it kind of uses the architecture of the spaces so it um, yeah it's still for us the same idea it's trying to make the world feel cinematic and trying to make you pay attention to it in this way um, we're, we're kind of playing with this in a couple of different modes in the moment as well we have this one walking experience which is a, a guided route through the world. We also have a, a sort of game version, I'll say game, where the speakers rather than playing all together, you get dropped off on your own somewhere in the city. So you start, uh, and we found logistically it's really hard to drop off 40 people simultaneously around a kind of mile square here in the city, but we give it a shot. Um, what we really want to do is put them in a van, blindfolded, drive the van around the town, throwing them out the back, but no festival has agreed to that yet, so we'll see. 
But you get dropped off on your own and your speaker starts calling out. So rather than being a continuous soundscape, it, it starts calling out with a kind of beacon. We make them from kind of animal noises and, and a, a note as well. And the idea is to find the other 40 people around the city just by listening out for their sound. So your speaker kind of calls out and you hear another one down the street. That comes. Um, and, if, and as they come together, they, uh, they form... Um, oh, I can show you. While I'm finding, any questions while I'm finding this? I'm sort of pumping through this to, to make the most of the 30 minutes. Okay. No? Okay. Um, well, my, my oh, yeah. I was wondering uh, what do you prefer, the, 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 the sound internal oh. or external? Oh. Or what not prefer, what is the advantage or disadvantage one or the other? Um, <laughs> the, for me, the advantage of the speakers is a wider shared experience. Um, because it's not just the people who are holding the speakers that are having the experience, the whole town or wherever it is becomes uh, part of that. The disadvantage, you're really visible. Are we And we haven't, for me, something that's always really important in um, interactive, participatory work, whatever term you want to use, is that contract with the audience, that contract of what are we going to ask you to do and what's your position going to be. With the, with the subtle mobs it's an easy one, it's kind of no one's really going to notice you. You don't even have to do it if you don't want, you can just listen to it and sit at home or in a cafe, it'd be nice if you do it, but you, you don't break it by doing that. With this piece we're, we're kind of saying come along and do this, people are like, oh, okay, and then they're, oh, I'm walking around, everyone's looking at me and I'm creating noise pollution and it's, and and we haven't quite worked out the invitation yet for that. What is the invitation to the audience? With you know, with a theatre work in a venue, it's easy. Come in, sit in the dark. The performers will do something for you, and if you don't like it, you can leave or you just watch them. With um, uh, some more participatory works, they're clearer beforehand. They say you're, this is going to be an interactive work, and you're going to come on stage. And, and we, yeah, we haven't worked out what our invitation for this piece is yet. We try and. We try and be clear in the copy and the and the marketing. Um, You've already done it a couple of times. Yeah. Speakers. Yeah. And you ran into issues. No. Um, there's two things that have happened. One is I think the comfort of the group helps um, because um, with the game piece, which is uh, this one. Um, yeah, not the best footage in the world. Um, we kind of we place people quite strategically, so we'll always put two or three people very near each other, so they find each other very quickly. So at the very beginning, you're you're very quickly. Um, yeah, we're sound artists and composers. We're not camera people. Um, uh, <laughs> we get other. This is what we film. We get other people to film them normally. Um, uh, but yeah, so we put people nearby, so they find each other quite quickly, and then they have that safety safety in the group. Um, yeah, we, we haven't had a problem yet, but I'm expecting one. I'm, I'm waiting to yeah, have that moment where someone says, I don't want to carry this anymore. I want to, you know, I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Throws it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that, that could be a problem. Um, How long does it take? One uh, the, 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 the one I was showing first on YouTube, that's about a 45 minute piece, I'd say. Yeah, 40, 45 minutes. Um, we just did a short version of it in a building in London, actually, a kind of 20-minute version, which was yeah, it was still sort of worked. Um, uh, I think it's weird. Most of the work we've made, the subtle mobs, the speaker symphonies, um, we've been doing a, a guided tour recently, um, which is I, a really exciting project. Um, let me. Um, they're all about 35, 40 minutes. Because I can imagine that after 50 minutes walking around with the box, it then suddenly starts something. Uh, maybe then you don't like it anymore. So yeah, won't you, like yeah it anymore. you get to. Help. Okay. <laughs> We've made them quite light now, which is a good, which helps. Um, um, but uh, yeah, you're right. It's there's. I mean, one thing that's really important for us is the audience experience, and um, that you know that always sounds like quite a. I think it has it hints of a sort of commercial sensibility, like the audience experience. But I think what we're actually talking about is the narrative of experience. The, the fact that everything from the way you receive an MP3 player or you're given a speaker becomes part of this story of that event. Um, 
in the same way that although we don't really think about it going into the cinema and that moment of getting the ticket and getting queuing for the popcorn or whatever are all part of that cinema experience and that shared moment and I, we kind of, we do sort of think about those moments and really design them we we also have a tendency to design pieces so that we never get a round of applause. It's really depressing making these works. With the speaker symphony, all the audience, we take them off them and we create a sort of installation at the end. So at the end, at the end of the piece, everyone's speakers are put down to create this multi-channel piece. And then we take them away, so they kind of walk away from this piece and they just go back into the world on their own. Um, but for us, that's quite an important, an important part of the experience is being able to hear the world. It's, I think we... We come from a we come from a background of loving sound and loving the sound of the world too, and sort of acoustic ecology principle. And yet, what we're doing is we're cutting people off from the world with headphones. We're um, 